This is presidential candidate Deion D. Jenkins coming to you today with another broadcast. The only black agenda priority candidate, the only legitimate reparations candidate, bringing you the four elements of reparations. A reparations package uh, was constructed using the four elements of American society, which is defensive structure, capital, land, and the access to capital. So I constructed a reparations package based on the four elements of reparations. It's called DMLG, Defense Money Land Grants, which is the four elements of reparations constructed from the four elements of American society, which is defense structure, capital, land, and the access to capital. This video is a response video to an article that I read. It's a Joe Quinn Phoenix article. Joe Quinn Phoenix is an actor. He played the Joker in the Joker movie. Um, I did watch it. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I did watch this movie um, because I grew up watching Batman. So I was very intrigued. I wanted to see. I was very curious on how they were going to put it together. So I saw it. It was a good movie. Great acting. Um, he he, I mean, I mean, the guy is a very good actor. I would give him that. Um, however, this is not a praise video. This is a, a criticism video for Joquin because he delivered a speech after he won an award and he was talking about racism. And this video is going to conduct commentary on that much needed commentary because I'm going to use this video as a a way to expose ex, uh, expose another form of exploitation that is going on that's going over a lot of people's heads and I want to talk about that um, and I'm going to read you some of the article I'm not going to read you all of it just to keep it in proper context what you have to understand that blacks who descended from American slaves the ones who decide to put their life at the forefront of activism work, meaning any type of act, um, activism work, tackling, challenging, and trying to dismantle white supremacy and racism, which you have to understand, we are a very criticized people. Blacks who descended from American slaves were very criticized. We are wrote off as 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 uh, whiners, complainers, delusional, um, crazy, you know, and a, a lot of people give us a lot of pushback. So I commend the people who do who do this work. Like we don't get accolades. Look at my videos. Look at my subscriber count. Oh yeah, by the way, like this video. Subscribe, share it, okay? Um, when you like it and when you like it and subscribe, you help me in the algorithms and you help me with ranking and search engine optimization. So I highly recommend that you do that because it's very helpful for me getting these messages out. What you have to understand is that black people put themselves in that type of line of fire. It is not a lifestyle of praise. It's not a lifestyle of celebrity. We're not going to win awards. We're not going to be acknowledged. We're not going to get accolades and all this type of stuff, right? So one of the pushbacks that, that we get when we talk about white folks who talk about racism and stuff like that, always using a camera to, to talk about racism and all this type of stuff. And we see this a lot. It seems like every time white people try to galvanize black people, they get in front of a camera talking about racism anytime. And you really see that in politics a lot as well. You know, he's, we saw it with Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, uh, Marion Williamson, Elizabeth Warren, even Joe Biden, who talking about who lied, talking about that he was in the civil rights movement. 
So we we hear this a lot, and it, it seems there is a very consistent pattern. Okay, and I'm going to talk about that today. The very first thing that you have to understand is that one of the pushbacks that we get as black people who try to expose this type of stuff is a lot of people they tell us well we need white people to acknowledge racism because it exposes nobody else can expose the problem like they can because white people are not going to listen to us but they're going to listen to them Okay. That's one of the criticisms that we get. And that criticism should be nullified immediately because that exposes the racism in that. Okay? That exposes the racism. Like if I can't talk to another white person and tell them, look, I am a black person who descended from American slaves, there's nobody credible to speak on racism. And the experience of it outside of myself. Now, you guys, white folks, they can help because they they definitely can be an asset to dismantle it. But the first question that any white person need to ask themselves, if they are sincere about stopping the problems of racism, the first thing that they have to ask themselves are are they willing to give up the privileges and the benefits that came with racism are they willing to give that up in order to dismantle it and then if they are willing to give that up then there is a procedure that they must go through to show that they are an ally right we keep hearing these words white allies white allies and I want to make it clear This video is going to expose this white ally fallacy. All right, because we must really be clear on who the real allies are and who are the people who are who are only trying to exploit our oppression, our pain and suffering. And our denigration, we must be able to exploit this once and for all. So I'm going to read you the article, some of it at, at least. And because just to put this article, I mean, just to put my commentary in proper context so we could really know what's going on and you could hear a real in time, you know, um, description of my commentary and the reasoning behind my commentary. The title of the article is entitled Joke Win Phoenix Calls Out BAFTAs for Lack of Diversity During Speech for Joker Win. Okay. Joke Win Phoenix scored yet another major award for his performance in Joker on Sunday, winning the BAFTA Leading Actor Prize. In a powerful speech, he, he lambasted the lack of diversity in the 2020 BAFTA nominations, as all of the nominees in the four main acting categories are white. He began his speech by saying that although he was honored by the award shows, continued recognition of his career, not all actors had the same privilege. Quote, I have to say that I also feel conflicted because so many of my fellow actors that are deserving don't have the same privilege. End quote. Uh, He said, quote, I think that we send a very clear message to people of color that you're not welcome here. I think that's the message that we're sending to people that have contributed so much to our medium and our industry and in ways that we that we do benefit from. End quote. He continues saying, quote, I don't think anybody wants a handout or preferential treatment, although that's what we give ourselves every year. I think people just want to be appreciated and respected for their work. End quote. While he was criticizing the industry as a whole, Phoenix acknowledged he hasn't done enough either to foster diversity in Hollywood. Now, I want you to put a thought bookmark on that statement right there. Okay, quote, this is not a self-righteous condemnation. 
because I'm ashamed that I'm part of the problem. I've not done everything in my power to ensure that the sets I work on are inclusive, end quote, he said. Now, if you notice, there are key words that consistently are being thrown out. Diversity, people of color, right? Inclusion, inclusiveness, and all this type of stuff. Just, just keep that in mind. Notice how they're not talking about black people, okay? Phoenix ended his speech by saying those benefiting the most from white privilege should be the ones to address racism in the industry. Quote, it's more than having sets that are multicultural. Another word, multicultural. I think that we have to really do the hard work to truly understand. Uh, I think that we really have to do the hard work to truly understand systemic racism, end quote, he concluded. Quote, I think that it is the obligation of the people that have created and perpetrate and benefit from a system of oppression to be the ones that dismantle it, so that's on us, end quote. Now, I want you to put a thought bookmark right there as well, because I'm, I'm going to talk about that. His speech garnered cheers from the audience, which stayed mostly silent as Phoenix spoke, of course. Of course they were cheering. He even walked away on stage after speaking, leaving his trophy on the podium. Critics have previously called out the lack of diversity in the BAFTA nominations, despite there being numerous actors of color who delivered acclaimed performances in 2019. The hashtag BAFTA so white spread around Twitter in response to the snubbing of actors, including J-Lo, Jennifer Lopez, which is J-Lo, Lupita Nyong'o, Cynthia Erivo, and Harriet. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why would you even acknowledge that Harriet movie and Aquafina? In a statement provided to EW when the nominations were announced in early January, BAFTA CEO Amanda Berry called the nomination, quote, hugely disappointing, end quote, as she pointed out, as she pointed out the group's, quote, year round activity has many strands that focus on diversity, end quote. So if you notice, there go that word again, diversity, right, inclusion. I'm not going to read all of this article. This article, you see where I'm going with this. You, you see the proper context, all right? So I'm going to talk about that. All right, so the very first thing that stood out to me in this article was when Joaquin Phoenix acknowledged that he's not doing anything to change the problem himself. So the question that you have to ask yourself is why is he talking about racism if he's not doing anything about it I think I may have an answer to that is it possible that he acknowledges and understands that if he talk about racism he get a lot of black people excited and black people who are the most active people on social media might give an opportunity for his speech to go viral on social media could it be possible that he could use this moment as a way to highlight his award winning uh, moment? Could he use this as an opportunity to highlight his award winning moment? I'm just asking y'all questions. Is it possible that maybe perhaps he could use this as an opportunity to have the media write articles about his speech? I'm just asking questions, folks. So what you have to understand is if, if he is really sincere about helping black people and notice that he didn't say black people, though. He said people of color and diversity and inclusion. And normally when he talk about diversity and inclusion, they are talking about gay people, transsexuals, white women, and everybody else who, who are not blacks who descended from American slaves. 
So, by really asking yourself these questions, my question for Joaquin Phoenix is, if you're so sincere about stopping racism in Hollywood, why aren't you doing anything about it? Outside of making a speech in front of a camera. It's funny how there's a famous statement that says that if you let a person talk long enough, he, he's going to eventually tell on himself. That's what this man just did. Because I promise you, he's not doing anything behind the scenes to help black people out. But he used that as a way to catapult himself. To capitalize off of our oppression. See, what you have to understand is blacks who descended from American slaves. There is, so, there is something that's called the separation of beneficiary Americanization between blacks and whites. And the reason why Mr. Joker and Phoenix have the opportunity to even get an award when, when he acknowledges that white folks have been blocking black people out of Hollywood. See, he benefits off of that. And the black people who are not being invited, who are being blocked out, they benefit the other side of that. So dealing with the criticism that we get, because we get a lot of criticism when we challenge white supremacy, even some black folks who are listening to this right now are squirming in their seats like, oh, man, here, this Negro talking about white folks again man he's always got to say something negative about some white folks man this guy that says something positive about black people and he's talking bad about it damn he 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 messing it up for us we're not going to be be able to get any white people to acknowledge us anymore like i said in the last video you have to ask yourself why do you need white acknowledgement so much but I'm not going to get into that in this video. This white man used his platform as a way to catapult himself when he acknowledged that he's not doing anything to solve the problem. So you have to ask yourself, is this a sincere movement, a sincere effort to stop rape, racism in Hollywood? Or is it a publicity stunt? Because here's how you can tell if it's a publicity stunt or not. When you have white people who get behind you. And if they are behind the camera. And if they're not blocking black people, if they are uh, using their quote unquote white privilege in order to create opportunities for black people right in in order to connect resources to black people okay here's how you could stop mr joquin phoenix here's how you could be very helpful for black folks you could start rubbing shoulders with those white Hollywood execs and and tell them, look, I'm not going to be in this movie until I see more blacks who descended from American slaves in this film. OK, white folks who are so-called white allies, because we hear that word a lot, white allies, right? You hear that that word gets gets thrown around and it deceives a lot of people. Instead of focusing on getting in front of a camera why not go behind the scenes and make sure that black people who are doing the work get acknowledged make sure that you have a black agenda priority candidate that's running right now make sure that you tell other white folks to vote for him why not donate to his campaign Tell other white folks to donate to his campaign. Since I can't talk to these white people because of racism 
Why don't you talk to them and tell them, look, you need to listen to him and stop being racist. Because I can't tell you how it is to be a black person in America, but he can. You need to listen to him and not me. But what I can do, because I have so, so much access to resources, I can use this access as a way to give him access as well. See, that's what you can do. We don't need politicians getting in front of cameras talking about racism. And then as soon as you start talking about cash payments, everybody's silent or they want to give us some chump change. Like Marion Williamson, just give up a little few bits and pieces to give you as little as possible just to get your vote. Because let's be real. White America do not want to see an equal society that will allow black people to compete on an equal level because that would take away from the beneficiary Americanization that they inherited. So that's that's what you can do, right? Acknowledging that m me not being able, ag acknowledging that my lack of my my lacking of not being able to have a conversation with people about racism is a problem, and that maybe you should use your privilege as a way to expose that and tell people no I am not a credible source I can only help with my resources but you need to listen to this man right here to these people over here and use your resources as a way to compensate right find out where these people are donate to their campaigns Donate to their organizations. Find black where the black businesses are. Support black business infrastructure. Do that. That'll go a long way. That's how you could be an ally. We don't need people talking in front of a camera trying to go viral on Facebook. We don't need that. And that's 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 the problem. That's that's the problem. And people who are so elated by white people who use our struggle and all and, and use our oppression as a way to cap capitalize for themselves, you got to ask yourself a question. What is it in your psychology that allows that to happen? And do you want liberation or do you want white acknowledgement? Do you want to just get closer to white people because you love white people? Or do you want liberation for your own people? That's a question that you have to ask yourself. All right. Now, Mr. Jokwin made another statement. He said that how only white people can change the problem. And that's I really had a problem with that statement. And this is the sickness that's perpetrated because black people, there are a lot of blacks who descended from American slaves who, who feel that way. And it's interesting because it was almost like it's a dog whistle because it takes away the credibility from blacks who are active, who are active in their society trying to change it. Because now what you're saying is that you're using... That statement was so slick. I don't think you guys realize that. So basically, let's say if you're a black activist, he just took away credibility from you because now he just made a statement that said, well, nobody could change it but us. So black people who are out here in the movement, that nullifies their credibility if only white people can change it. Because now when you're trying when you are attempting to galvanize your people, they are going to be in the back of their psychology thinking, no, we need a white person. The value 
is in white activism, not black activism. We need white people to fight for us. We don't need black people to fight for us. We need white folks. Right? You get a lot of people who think like that. That's a huge fallacy. And it's so counterintuitive. And he, that was a dog whistle that he sent to white folks and black people who are programmed to worship whiteness. He sent a dog whistle. Look, if you want an activist, you need to depend on us. So he just want to, they want to control everything. They want to control everything. Like we need white folks. We need another, we need another Eminem activist. <laughs> we need a, we need an Eminem like activist. Right? We need a dude who's going to get in front of a camera and talk about it. And you guys be swooned so much. You guys be elated so, so much that you, that you don't even realize that we ain't doing nothing about it. That just went over your head. We, we are just going to use your emotions as a way to galvanize for our benefit. For our benefit and our benefit only. And hardly anybody saw that. That went over everybody's head. I was the only person to catch that one. It strips the power from black people. That statement right there is strip any power that you have to galvanize your own people for political and economic action. Because now you're thinking... Well, we don't need any more black people because it's useless. We need white folks. That's what Joe Quinn Phoenix said. He said the only people who could change this is us. Only we can do that. We started it. We finish it. The problem with that statement is that there is too much invested interest for white supremacy to stay in place. You would never get a large amount of white people that are going that are going to be really active in real work on ending the system of white supremacy. You would never have that. You, you, you would you would never have that ever. Now, if you could find a way how they could benefit. You might get some allies, but you would never have a mass movement of white folks who are going to be fighting against white supremacy because that's their equity. That's the reason why they could get the nice house and you can't. Why they could get the good promotion over you. Why they could get that good job that you're trying to get. How you could be on your job for 20 years and he could just come right along in one year and, and get promoted over you. That's the reason why he could commit a crime and ditch jail. That's the reason why he could do whatever he wants to do, including take your life and not get charged. Why would he want to give that up? See, that's the problem with that statement. No, if they, if, if white supremacy is going to end, it's going to be, be because black people led the charge. I'm not saying that we're not going to have white allies. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that black people are the ones who are suffering because of it. So it's going to be black people who are going to have to get themselves out of it. The people who benefit off of white supremacy is not going to get you out of it. That's not how life works. This is Deion D. Jenkins. Let's stop allowing white supremacy to exploit us. This is Deion D. Jenkins running for president of the running for president of the United States of America reparations candidate now prove this message <laughs>